If you think about your GA4 property as a gigantic pool of data, then a data stream is just a flow filling that pool. Now, let's go into the browser and see how does that work. Okay, here we are in GA4 CYA program, Google Analytics 4 account, and if we wanted to find the data stream for this very property, We'd go into the admin section, then in the middle column for properties, you go to data stream and here it is. We already have it created and then if I click on it, you will see that this data stream has a name. We gave it to it. We filled in the stream URL. ID was created automatically and GA4 measurement ID is an important number and we already talked about it in the previous video. Now. If we wanted to create another stream, then we choose website here. Uh, Google would notice us that in most cases, a single web stream does the work, but we still want to make it for the purpose of demonstration, even though using multiple web streams, as they say, may lead to inconsistent results. Are we sure? Yes, we're sure. And we create the stream. You see that Google instantly informs us about all the ways that we can install the tag and uh, we see that it assigned a measurement ID to this data stream. Of course, it's not receiving data because we just created it, but if we wanted to install this data stream on any website out there, we'd be able to. Now, you may have noticed previously that when I created this web stream, I had to open this drop-down and it offered me to choose whether I wanted to track website behavior data or mobile app user behavior data. Now that's one of the superpowers that GA4 is capable of, especially compared to the previous version of Universal where you were not able to combine and mix up the data from your users visiting your website or using your app, whether it's an Android app or an iOS one. So. Let's go into the Google Analytics of uh, Flooded, which is a mobile app that Google created and graciously gave us the access to the demo account. So we can compare how does that look when you actually have separate data streams. For this particular property, we see that it collects Android app data, iOS app data, and then the website. The website for this very addictive game that I may say is pretty basic. It just has a home page and you can scroll a little bit down there, but it has nothing except the links to the App Store or Google Play Store. But if you look at the reporting interface of that account, you will see that it actually tracks way more people when they are using the app. Let's look at the real-time report and I'm going to activate the game on my phone and we'll try to identify myself in there. So yeah, okay, I'm playing the game right now. You see how it looks. You actually have to flood the entire board with a single color. But I remember the easiest way to identify myself was to choose device model 41. I'll apply this filter and then yeah, this is probably me. You see there is one minute ago one user and I've been looking at no page title and screen name, which means that I'm not on the website, but there are several screen views and stuff because these were probably users that were playing this game previous to my visit. If you go, for example, to the demo account flooded property, we're looking at three different streams. And now I want you to remember the names flooded Android and flooded iOS. We go to the monetization report. It's important to understand that we can compare how these two streams perform in terms of monetization or any other metric you want to compare them, but monetization could be an interesting one. So I find the stream name here. Where is it? I may have missed it. Here it is, stream name, and I pick flooded iOS. Okay. I apply, then I add a new comparison. I also choose stream name. 
I say, I want to see how it compares to Android. And here it is. Android probably made no money in the last week, but let's see for the past 12 months. Here it is. Okay. You see how these two compare. And that's because I applied the comparison based upon stream name. Now let's compare how does Google Analytics for data stream actually stack up against Universal Analytics View. If you remember the hierarchy we had with the Universal, there was the account, then the property, and then views. In uh, GA4, we also have the account, we have the property, but the views are not there. Instead of them, we have data streams. And even though the two may appear similar, they are quite different because Universal View was more, you set a rule or a set of rules that you tell Google, I want to look at just this data set and I want to obscure everything else. In data stream, you're actually dealing with the flow of data coming into your property. So it's view was more like a lens and the data stream is more like a river or like an influx of data, whichever term you prefer. But basically, it, there's a huge difference between them. Now, to wrap up this lesson, I want to recap what we learned about data streams. And basically, we can find them under the admin section and the middle property column and the data streams. There are three types of streams. Website, Android and iOS app streams. And then Google Analytics 4 data streams are unique flows from particular touch points that fill in the big pool of data that is actually your GA4 property. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.